Let's see if we can understand geometry in 10 minutes. Now, can you really take a 10-minute uh, class and understand uh, all of geometry? No, that's impossible, okay? And the geometry uh, level I'm talking about here is pretty much like a high school level geometry uh, course. But what I want to do in about 10 minutes is walk you through the chapters of my course, which is pretty typical for any high school level geometry course. And we're just going to quickly highlight each chapter so you kind of get a basic sense of what would be in each chapter and a basic understanding of these topics. So I think I could do that in about 10 minutes of uh, after which, you know, you uh, hopefully will feel less intimidated about geometry if you are considering uh, taking that topic. All right. So the first chapter of a geometry course is going to be something like this. Here, these are my chapters, by the way. So this would be like the foundations to geometry. So what do you learn in that? Well, you learn things like, hey, what is a line? What is a point? You learn terms like collinear, coplanar, and you learn like basic notation, like um, uh, like right here. Let me just draw something. So if we have this right here would be like a line segment, and then we have endpoints like here's A and there's B. So we could represent this line segment as the notation AB. Then we learn how to write angles. So if we have like A, uh, B, C, this would be like angle uh, B, A, C. Okay, the A here is in the center. So this goes B, A, C or C, A, B. So this would be angle B, A, C. So if, uh, in foundations to geometry, just learn some basic uh, definitions about what points are, what a plane is, how to represent angles, and some other basic type stuff. So it's not too difficult, just a lot of kind of introductory level type of uh, information. All right, let's move on to chapter two. Now, one of the big things in um, uh, high school uh, geometry is doing proofs. And typically, students look like this when they do proofs. They just don't like proofs. They're just like, go, no, anything but proofs. That's so scary. Listen, uh, if you um, have taken geometry or taken it, you, you can understand what I'm talking about. But a proof is you have to prove something. And this is a pretty big deal. Okay, so reasoning and proof, this has to do with uh, things like logic. And it's real, um, uh, in high school level geometry, you deal with things called postulates, okay, and theorems. You're going to learn the difference, but you're also going to learn about uh, logic and specifically deductive logic, okay, uh, and how to construct a geometric proof, all right? This is very, very important, and uh, again, uh, most students are a little bit um, thrown off by this because they never really kind of studied logic before in any kind of formal sense, but this is very, very important stuff. So in geometry, in a high school level geometry course, uh, some of the questions, not all the questions, um, obviously, but you're going to see proof questions, which are going to be like prove uh, something, okay, this situation. You're going to have to construct a proof, and a lot of students find this very difficult. So anyways, you're going to uh, encounter this, but again, really you're going to be learning about logic, okay, which is very interesting, by the way, as well. So I think a lot of you actually might enjoy that. All right, let's move on to chapter three. By the way, we're, uh, we're looking at 11 chapters in my course. So uh, chapter three is going to be, in my course, it's uh, perpendicular and uh, parallel lines, okay? So uh, what are parallel lines? Well, parallel lines are lines that never cross one another, so here is L and here is M. We can say L is parallel to M. And what are perpendicular lines? Well, we have line L here, and then we have another line right there, M, and these two lines are perpendicular. So there's a heavy emphasis on parallel lines and all the angles that are created when you have two parallel lines and something called a transversal that chops through them, okay? So when you have a transversal, which is another line, that chops through two parallel lines, all kinds of uh, angles are created. You got these things called vertical angles, you got alt, uh, alternate interior angles, same side interior corresponding angles. So you're really gonna study this pretty heavy duty. And by the way, I must say that um, a lot of the problems that you're gonna be uh, doing with uh, this subject 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, parallel lines or perpendicular lines, it, uh, it's going to require you to know some algebra. Okay, so you're going to need to have your algebra skills ready to go. But this is a full chapter for any geometry course. So you're going to learn all the different um, uh, special angles formed when you have a transversal that chops through two or more parallel lines. And then you're going to study more uh, properties and theorems about uh, perpendicular lines as well. Very, very important chapter indeed. Okay, let's take a look at chapter four. Again, uh, each geometry course, every geometry course out there is going to have, oh, I'm trying to scoot this down. That's not working. Let me see if I can just move this down this way. That'll work. Okay, so um, congruent. Let's talk about congruent triangles. Let me give myself some room. All right, so what does this word right here mean? Well, you need to know this. Con uh, congruent is this little symbol right there, okay? So you have equals, this is congruent, and then this little squiggly line is similar. We'll talk about that in a second. So we're talking about congruency, and we're talking specifically about triangles, but congruent triangles mean the exact same size and shape, okay? So if I have a triangle right here, okay, and uh, let's call this A, B, C, and I have the exact same size and shape. Let's call this D, E, F. So I can write this this way, triangle A, C, B, and triangle D, E, F. I can say these two triangles are congruent if they have the same uh, angles and same uh uh, so the sides are the, uh, are the same, same length, and the angles are the same. In other words, they're exact copies of one another. That's what you have to um, understand about congruency. It's basically an exact copy of a figure. Okay, now, of course, in this uh, particular chapter, you're going to be talking about congruent triangles, and you're going to be learning all kinds of postulates and theorems, things like uh, SSS, side, side, side. So if you have two triangles and each of the sides are the same lengths, you um, have congruent triangles. Okay, so you're going to be learning some uh, various theorems and postulates that, uh, in order for you to be able to prove, and this is where that idea of proof is going to come in, uh, that you uh, you can prove that you have two triangles are congruent. Okay, so congruency is a big deal in geometry. All right, let's move down to our next chapter, and notice we are talking about. Um, no, I can't really scroll down here. It's not working for me too well, but I'm just going to move things down this way. Okay, so we're going to be um, talking about uh, properties of triangles. Okay, so what are we talking about there? Well, you're going to be really looking at triangles in depth. You're going to talk about angle bisector theorem. So if I have an angle right here in a triangle and I bisect it, in other words, I cut this angle in half, what happens to this situation over here? Okay, and there's all kinds of theorems and properties one of the unique things too you're going to be t uh, learning is about um, learning about in terms of triangles is the triangle inequality. Okay, triangle inequality, and I've done uh, different videos on that as well. Let's take a look at uh, a triangle inequality problem right now. Let me see if I can uh, make something up. So three, four, five. Okay, so this right here. 3, 4, 5 would be the length of a right triangle. So this is an actual length of a triangle. But one of the things about uh, properties of triangles that you're going to study in depth in a geometry course is notice here is that the sum of any two sides is always greater than the third side of a triangle. So for example, 5 plus 3 is going to be greater than 4. 3 plus 4 is greater than 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let's see, what else are we missing here? Uh, 5 plus 4. 5 plus 4 is greater than 3. So any two sides, when you add up in a triangle, hat must be greater than that third uh, last side remaining, just as I showed you right here. If it isn't, then, you, then the lengths given uh, could not form a triangle. Okay, so this is going to be part of the stuff that you're going to be learning and the properties of triangles. Again, angle bisector theorems and triangle inequality, very, very important stuff. Again, heavy emphasis on triangles. Okay, we, we're talking about congruent triangles and we're talking about uh, properties of triangles. We're going to actually be studying triangles even further uh, down the road here in a second. I will show you because we'll talk about right triangles. But let's move on to our next chapter. And uh, hopefully I'm doing okay on time. I don't think I'm going to be doing this in 10 minutes, especially with the way my uh, 
thing is going here. Normally I'm able to space this out, but let me just fix this real quick. I apologize for any difficult technical difficulties, but we're not going to let that stop us. Learn some high school geometry here. Okay, so let's talk about the next thing here. Uh, quadrilaterals, big, big word. And um, quadrilaterals are, are four-sided closed figures, okay, that are constructed with lines, things like this. So what type of quadrilaterals are we talking about? Well, this is really, quadrilaterals are a type of polygon, okay? So we're talking about a four-sided polygon. And you're going to be studying things like the rectangle, all the properties of a rectangle. Uh, trapezoid is another one. Uh, a rhombus, okay, uh, and a square, all right? So these are, uh, you're going to be talking about all the different properties with uh, respect to uh, quadrilaterals and special quadrilaterals as well, okay? So you're going to have a lot of fun in this particular chapter. Very, very important. And now let's move on. Oh, boy, excuse me right here. I'm going a little bit too far. Let's move on to similarity. Okay, again, my thing is not working, but I'm not going to stop this video and make this over again. I'm just going to keep plowing away. All right, so let's move on here. Similarity, okay? So what is similarity? Well, similarity is that one little squiggly figure right there. So let me just kind of show you that. So let's say I have a little triangle like this, okay? And let's just uh, kind of really make sure you understand. Okay, so these two triangles together are exactly the same copy of one another. So these two triangles right here, this would be a, an example of congruency. That's what congruency are. Congruency is, it's an exact copy of one another. However, in this particular chapter, you're going to be dealing with similarity. And similarity is a different deal. And similarity is kind of a zoomed in or zoomed out copy of that figure, okay? So if you are given one figure and you zoom in, or if you're given one little figure and you zoom out, okay, uh, vice versa, this is similarity, okay? So similar figures have the same angle measure, okay? And their sides, their respective sides are in proportion, all right, so uh, you're going to find out in this particular chapter, you're going to be setting up a lot of ratios and proportions to solve problems. Okay, very, very important that you understand the difference between similarity and congruency. And again, uh, ratios and proportions, things that you learned in algebra. Okay, you're going to have to bring all your algebra skills to geometry for sure. Okay, let's move on to our next thing here. Oh, look, it did it for me finally. I was able to space out. And that is uh, transformations. Okay, so what am I talking about with transformations? Well, transformations are basically, let me just show you this real quick, uh, things that we can do with a figure. So let's say I have a figure like this, okay, and I want to rotate it. Let's say I run a rot rotate it clockwise over here. That would be a transformation. Or maybe I have a box right there and I flip it across the x-axis, it would be right there. So transformations are things like rotations, okay? Uh, let's see here, um, uh, reflections, all right? Uh, if I could reflect something across the x-axis, this point reflected, its mirror image would be over here. So if this is point A, this would be like A prime. And uh, so we have uh, rotations, reflections, we have these things called dilations which are uh, pretty cool. This is kind of when you zoom in and out. And then you think you have something called like glide reflections as well. Okay, so where you kind of take something, you move it up, and then you shift it over to the right. But that's, that's the whole idea behind uh, transformations. Okay, so you're, again, you're going to have a whole chapter on that. And we got three chapters here. I probably went over 10 minutes, but uh, hopefully you're still with me because you're interested in this stuff. Okay. All right, so let's move on. And now we have right triangles and basic trigonometry. Again, this is our third uh, chapter that has to do with ded dedicated uh, to triangles. Okay, so now we're talking about right triangles. Again, that's where one of the angles is 90 degrees, uh, represented by this little uh, notation right there. <clears throat> Excuse me, boy. I have uh, technical difficulties and I'm having issues with my voice, but guess what? That's not going to stop me. All right, let's move on 
and talk about right triangles. So what are we talking about? Some of the uh, what are some of the things we're going to be talking about in this chapter? We're going to be talking about like the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Definitely going to need to know how to deal with this for sure. Uh, you're also going to be talking about special right triangles. This is very important. So you're talking like 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 degree right triangles. Now, uh, in this chapter as well, you're going to learn basic trigonometry. This is your stuff like sine, cosine, and tangent. Very, very important. So you really get an introduction to trigonometry in this chapter as well. Okay, so we're almost done. And, uh, you know, maybe I should do these video videos in advance, time it. But, you know, I just don't, you know, I just kind of go. <laughs> when I do videos, I make so many videos, I do the best estimation I can. But if I'm over 10 minutes, please forgive me. But let's move on with our last two chapters. So chapter 10 in my course is circles. Okay, so what are we talking about with circles? Well, obviously, uh, we're going to be talking about things that you already know. Okay, so we have a circle. So you're going to learn about the area of a circle, the circumference of the circle, uh, basic uh, vocabulary about a circle, like here's a diameter, there's the center, there's the radius, uh, all that kind of good stuff. But you're actually going to be learning about different parts of a circle, very, very important as well. So uh, we're going to be learning about things called a chord. Okay, and what happens if we have two lines that go through a circle? What happens to these angles? And then what happens with these arcs in here? So there's a lot of different things you're going to need to know about inscribed angles. That would be something like this. Okay, so if I have an angle inscribed inside of a circle, so what's the angle measure here if I'm given this arc? right there. So you learn a lot of different properties and uh, theorems uh, about circles in this particular chapter. Not, this is not that difficult. Okay, Again, you're going to be doing some algebra work in here, but not heavy duty algebra. As long as you need to, as long as you know how to solve basic algebra equations, you're going to be okay. But the whole thing here is just a lot of information. I don't think it's overly difficult. That's why you have to have super like awesome notes, very, very organized notes. There's just way too much information given for you to remember, memorize all this stuff. Okay. But again, not difficult, just a lot of information. And finally, now let's go ahead and finish with this last chapter in my course. And that would be area and volume. So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about uh, the area and volume of basic figures. So we're, we're uh, things like rectangles, squares, uh, circles, triangles, uh, trapezoids. Uh, then we can kind of get into like pyramids, uh, cylinders, okay, when we're talking about volume, spheres, and then uh, things that uh, when we look at a circle, we could be talking about uh, the area of like a little pie section here. Okay, so that's a sector of a circle. Okay, and this is an arc and whatnot. So you really kind of get heavy duty into all, you know, uh, we're talking about area, surface area, volume of all these basic figures, and then um, also sectors of circles as well. And this is it. Uh, you know, I probably went over 10 minutes. Um, that's the case. You know, I'm sorry for not being 100% perfect. But, uh, you know, when you take a look at this, if you got a pretty good, like a basic sense of like, okay, I think I understand what he was saying. Well, then you kind of have a pretty good feel, an overview of what you're going to encounter in high school level geometry. Okay, so uh, the bottom line here is this. Make sure you have done pretty well in algebra before you start looking at any geometry course. But, um, you know, hopefully this little video gave you a feel for what, uh, you know, for what you're going to expect. So this is my course. Again, I'm going to leave a, li a direct link to my geometry course in the description of this video. But if you're taking another geometry course, you know, it's going to be pretty similar as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.